Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have this super cute tropical themed birthday card to share with you today. So this one, if you haven't already noticed, was heavily influenced by this adorable card that Maureen had made for Lawn Fawn. It's not very often that I copy people's designs, mostly because I have so many ideas that I'm still trying to get out. Or you know, I put them on a list and think I'm so going to make that and then I never get back to doing it. But this one was just really, really cute and I thought if I just turned it pineapple, I could turn it into the perfect card for my dad for his birthday. Okay, so let's get started. I used a whole bunch of stamps from a whole bunch of sets. So I've got the straws from these ones. I've got the tiny little can of drink in this one and that is because my dad makes the best drinks that have pineapple Fanta in them. So I thought that was fitting. I'm using the bubbles from this set just like Maureen did. I don't have any sets with ice cubes. I don't own that set that has like the blender and the fruit. So I'm just using some marshmallows and hoping for the best. From this die set, I'm using the top of the cupcake, the cherry and the stem for the cherry. For this one, I'm using the frozen yogurt because it kind of looks like a little doll whip. I thought it suited it nicely. And then from my Toucan Do It set, I'm using the toucans and the flowers. And of course, I can't forget my pineapple from my little mini stamp set here and my How You Bean jar. For just a couple of little other things, I do have these stamps that I bought a very long time ago. They are rubber stamps, and I thought I would like the little torches from this one and the stick to like skewer the pineapple. I was going to use the letters, but I didn't end up using them. If you'd like more info on them, I'll put the link below. They don't physically sell stamps anymore. They just do digital files for that brand. But anyway, I have a whole lot of stamping to do, so I need to get started. So just like always, I'm stamping out all of my images twice, except for one of my little toucans. His head, for some reason, doesn't like being stamped, but he got there in the end. And I really did try to fit everything on one piece of paper. I don't know why I tried to do this. I smooshed them all in there. I guess it just looks better when I colour them in a little bit later. But my paper got filled with leaves and little flowers and those little marshmallows that I'm hoping kind of look okay for ice cubes. I stamped out the rubber stamps as well. I originally did two of these little torches, although I only used one. And I also stamped out a bunch of little flames and I didn't end up using them. I decided to use some little flame dies from the fireplace die set by Lawn Fawn. Okay, on to colouring. And there is a lot of yellow <laughs> for this one. My pineapples, the big jar, there's so much. So I'm using my Copic markers for these. I'm using a yellow and an orange one and I'm just simply blending them together. I'm doing the same technique I always use, especially when there's so many images to color in. I just find it's nice and fast. I did, however, do a slightly different technique with the leaves this time. Instead of making like a shadow on one edge of the leaf, I decided to do it all around the edges and I did my white details a little bit differently on them and I really like how it turned out, but you'll see that soon. So I had a lot of fun making this card. There is a lot of details to it and it did take a little bit of time. But I, after seeing the way Maureen had done it, I thought, well, it's, it's going to turn out good <laughs> because her card turned out really pretty. I was talking to another crafter on Instagram about Maureen's work and how beautiful it was because I shared it in my stories and they had sent me a message about it. And we got talking and I said that Maureen is the perfect example of instead of less is more, more is more. She just, I don't know how she does it, but a lot of her cards have a lot of details in them and she pulls them off. They never look crowded. Everything just seems to have a really well thought purpose and placement. And I'm hoping that's what I can recreate today. So going yellow and not copying the pink meant I had to do a bit of thinking for myself. And I was having a bit of trouble working out what color went well with the yellow. And I kind of went with like a dark jade green for the leaves. And uh, I'm just sometimes not very good at picking like the third color <laughs> to, to balance this out. So I asked on Instagram and I had a lot of people reply and say that pink or purple would go really well with these. And I thought, yeah, okay, that it would work. I was thinking kind of a pinky color, but I don't know. So then I put up a poll for pink or purple and the poll was exactly 50-50. I had no help whatsoever picking this. But um, in the end, I kind of went for a bit of both. So you'll see when I color in things like the straws that I managed to get like a really nice purple to hot pink transition in that. It looked really pretty. But I'm glad I went with these colors. They did look really good in the end. At least I think so.
So this part here was a little bit tricky for me because I usually colour in such small little images. So doing a really big coloured area was a bit daunting. But I think it turned out okay. Copics are fairly forgiving, which is really good. So all I did here was go in with that yellow and that orange and kind of go back and forth a little bit, blending it out. I did want it to look darker down the bottom and lighter at the top, and I think that is exactly how it turned out. And here are these straws up close with that perfect blend. I don't know how that turned out, but they just turned out really pretty. So after all that colouring, it was then finally time to add my white highlights. And while I had my markers out, I nearly forgot I had to colour in some of the die cut pieces. This top of the cupcake that's going to be my swirl on top of my jar and my cherry and its stem. With my jar dies, the big die that has no hole in the middle, I cut out a white piece of cardstock and a piece of acetate. And for the one that does have a hole in the middle, I used it to cut my coloured in jar and some pieces of Kids Adhesive Craft Foam. For the cutout of my coloured piece, I stuck on the white piece of cardstock, 
and then around that I stuck my adhesive foam. Today I did two layers so that it's nice and thick and that my pieces can move around. And so that my pieces can move around. I set all of that aside for a little while because I didn't want any wet glue around while I'm working on the shaker elements. So on to my background. Today I'm using some brown cardstock and I'm going to be sticking this down to my mat so that it doesn't move anywhere. And then I'm using my Tropical Leaves background stencils. I've used them a lot. There's a whole video on different colored backgrounds that I had used with this stencil, but today I'm going with brown, just as Maureen had done for hers. I really like that tone on tone look. It's a nice subtle detail in the background and I thought it would look really good behind all of these tropical elements that I have. Here I have a slightly lighter piece of cardstock and it's only small and it's going to be I guess like the base, the table, the ground, whatever you would call it and it's going to be down the bottom of my card just so that it looks like things aren't floating around. Once I had done that I then adhered this smaller piece into place. It's going to be hanging off and down so that it makes my card front a little bit longer than it usually would just using that stitched rectangle die. I had a lot of pieces to put on and I realized that they were quite high up on the card and some would be hanging off and it wasn't going to fit properly so I thought I would just extend my card front a little bit and make it work. Before I start sticking anything down I thought it would be best if I put my sentiment on now. So I'm going with a very simple and scripty happy birthday from my party animal stamp set. That stamp set is a much older one but it is so handy for things like this. It's got all the party hats, it's got cute sentiments. I'm so glad I have this one in my collection now. So I've stamped on that sentiment using some embossing ink and covered it with white embossing powder. I took it over to my kitchen to heat emboss. And while I'm here, I'm going to put on my double-sided tape. I try to do this fairly early on so that I'm not doing it at the last minute when all of my beautiful three-dimensional pieces have been stuck onto the front. I don't like the idea of having them face down, maybe picking up some ink off my mat or possibly squishing them. Now for the really fun part, I got to fill up my cute little cocktail jar with all the shaker elements. I'm putting in a couple of those ice cubes, some of the bubbles, some of those cute little crystals that I have lying around, and then these tiny little pineapple pieces. I have had these in my craft stash, I'm not kidding, for like 10 years, and I keep holding on to them thinking that, you know, I should probably get rid of them, I'm never going to use them. And now I think within the last month I've used the bananas and the pineapples. So I'm glad I didn't throw them away. I'm just using some PVA glue, to stick this top down and just before I do that I sprinkle in some of that anti-static powder. I know it might seem like a weird thing and I've not seen anyone say that it does actually work but I just feel a little bit better that it's in there so that things have less of a chance of getting static and sticking to each other. So after that had had some time to dry I then gave it a little shake and my pieces moved around it really nicely. I did have a couple of those tiny little pineapple pieces get stuck up under the foam but I kind of expected that and that's why I put so many of them in there. To plan out my background, I'm going to move that pineapple shaker a million times. I'm just going, because it's going to be one of the last pieces I stick on this because I'm going to have so many elements kind of poking out around it. So I just wanted that freedom to be able to lift it up and check that everything underneath was getting stuck down properly and in the right positions. So I'm going to leave you with some music while I do this because it's a bit of a tedious task, but I love seeing everything here come together.
so that was a lot <laughs> there was a lot of work but as you can see this whole scene has come together and it looks so nice so i'm going to take off the backing to my double-sided tape and i'm going to stick my card front onto my card base To finish it off I'm just sticking on a few extra pieces of that little pineapple and then it's going to be all done. Now that that's finished we're going to give it a final shake so you can see all those beautiful pieces moving around in there. Thank you so much to Maureen for creating such a wonderful card. It was truly so inspiring that I had to stop all plans for all other cards and get this one done. If you enjoyed this tutorial then please give this video a thumbs up and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I am like a handful of subscribers away from 2000. I would love for you to join us and stick around. I'll leave you with some photos of the finished card. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.